chapter one of dreams and realities this is a librivox recording all librivox recordings are in the public domain for more information or to volunteer please visit librivox dot org recording by betty b dreams and realities by rosa mulholland corkom row the burren hills are gray as death but warm with life their lap of green their airs are sweet as mary's breath the flower-sweet breath of mary queen connor o'brien of the kings how sound you sleep in corcom row the night wind in the lone choir sings the hymns of many a year ago the wild bird folds his wing and broods upon the broken altar-stone the loud rain beats in angry floods o king where you are lying lone on shattered shaft and carven face down yonder in the grass-green aisles through hollow arch and vacant space the loving sunshine looks and smiles with solemn chant and sacred rite with burning spice and torches flame they bade you rest who loved the fight they gave you praise denied you blame they ripped the chancel's paven floor and laid your warriors there in rows their requiem is the tempest's roar their souls are sped where no man knows and are you free from earthly ills so peacefully you seem to lie or do you roam the burren hills by night and raise the battle cry do ghostly clans ascend the ridge to fight the battle o'er again that built of men a human bridge to cross the stream was blocked with slain oh no it was the sea-bird's shriek i heard just as the moon went down you bearing still in silence meek your sceptre marred your broken crown the grass grows thick upon your host they hear no pipe they hear no drum their mouths are shut their feet are dust the brave are lame and deaf and dumb may mary of the fertile rock befriend you all in corcom row you connor and your fiery flock of many a hundred years ago end of section one the irish franciscan by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by larry wilson a barefoot friar all in brown weather-beat face and storm-rent gown tattered hood over a shaven crown travelleth as the sun goes down whether ere morning goeth he over the bog he moveth free bog so brown it were hard to see that brown man travelling patiently hidden under his threadbare vest he holdeth one close to his breast o lord in what poor place of rest this winter's eve thou harborest deep in the pools the red lights die darkness veileth the western sky only the plovers cry and cry amens to prayers as they flitter by who are these thou barefoot man weak and weary and under a ban who meet thee in the starlight wan colum and patrick and adamnon three with torches faint and white threading the holes to give thee light bowing before the one of might thou bearest with thee through the night now the dawn opes in the east there's the altar and here the priest welcome now to the last and least who hunger for the master's feast table of rock and cloth of moss gold and silver are mammon's dross rude is the stone and rude the cross o christ our gain o world our lost ye band and outlawed of the faith shrive ye now with bated breath hither the hunter hasteneth fear not the little pain of death shine the moon on the curling sea sighs the wind in the white thorn tree forth from the bough as the gale blows free swingeth a figure dolorously a barefoot friar all in brown weather beat face and threadbare gown girdle of rope and shaven crown swingeth he as the moon goes down End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Our Lady of the Irish Hills by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org 
by Eva Davis. Once upon a summer night, while the red was in their skies, and their grass grew high and pale, stood I there and raised my veil, lingered there and loosed their eyes in a faint celestial light, and my eyes said unto theirs that so loving looked in mine, Loving, I have come to ye hither, make it known of me, so the world may see the shrine I have built me of your prayers. Yet, saith Mary with a sigh, Nathan's purple hills are lone, and my shrine unvisited, when the red is in their skies and their grass is overgrown, for my answer listen I. Queen and maid, the angel saith, with world hurry, rushing feet seek thee in thy palaces golden builded, and in ways jewel lighted, as is meet splendor for a world wide faith. Holy Irish hills are bare, sunshine makes their only gold, flower and grass their jewels be, their sad musics the wild sea. Purple lieth in their fold only of the mystic air. Tender lady queen, the world ne'er will track thee to that shrine where the sea birds sing thy praise, and the windy clouds upraise banners wove of rain and shine, star and moonbeam never furled. Saith Mary, Anywhere I can draw the world at will through the lonely singing sea singing love perpetually to the blue between hill and hill and the world shall praise me there love is more than pearls to me in the holy irish hills love abideth and world gold and world jewels manifold are as dust before the ills love endureth patiently sorrows of their patience are roses in my coronet. I will have of them a shrine set with rubies red as wine, with a veil of sapphire set in a frame of moon and star. Smiling to the angels, saith Mary thus, so my desire whispered is to men, and I listen long for their reply. While in Irish hearts a fire Love feeds still the flame of faith. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. At Nazareth by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson O Mary, cease your weeping. Why ever weep and pray? I'll tell you a sweet story will make you laugh today. Yon children at their playing to one another said, There's a little crown of glory round little Jesus' head. Queen Mary ceased her weeping, and dropped her eyes from where a somber cross was hanging, adown the radiant air. Tis sweet that little story that you have kindly told. The world is full of sunshine. My son has hair of gold. Then she who was not Mary, she hugged her child with joy. Thank heaven that my own baby is like any mother's boy. Queen Mary ceased not praying, but checked her falling tears. She saw her king come leaping with laughter for her fears. O oh boy, my tender baby, O oh babe, my God who art, speak comfort to thy mother, thy sword turns in her heart. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Prayer of Mary Queen by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Prayer of Mary Queen I traveled on a windy cloud that sailed the midnight sky and saw wrapped in a sable shroud this world go wheeling by upon a circling wind i spun the moon and stars between uprose from out a hidden sun the holy mary queen a golden flame her long hair was 
her eyes were wet with rain as sweet a face no lady has two cherubs were of her train her gown was made of every flower her girdle gold and twist her veil was all a rainbow shower her feet were silver mist she stood upon the world's dark rim her lifted hands implored along with her sweet whisper him the universe's lord most piercing sweet the voice o mine own son of mortal born the robes are still incarnadine on cavalry were worn is earth grown barren to thy spade yet grew it the rude tree of its sharp thorns thy crown was made it gave a grave to thee its daughter thou wert wont to call thy mother o be then still patient with her kindred all the wayward sons of men thy purple robe is spread with stars thy head is crowned with suns the wheels of thy life-laden cars turn while thine ordinance runs a many gold ships navigate the seas of boundless space and carry their immortal freight to port of thy loved face their children follow their son thee to days without the night their souls sail for eternity and fearless run the light yet hast thou mother of their kin my babe upon my knee i link thee to a world of sin thou wilt not unmake me my race shall yet put on the sun and darkness rule no more now finish what thou hast begun the law of light restore o child who from my humble knee unto the temple strayed thou camest quickly home with me because i wept and prayed o meek and gracious son of mine at cana in galilee thou gavest them the needful wine for but a word from me o heavens uncomprehended lord thy mother still am i now hearken hearken to my word let not the sinner die and bid the rebel orb go by sweet sun creator dread be mercy only saviour die again to raise these dead the sun uprose the heavens were rent and took her from my sight rose red grew the wide firmament and morn was glad with light end of poem this recording is in the public domain laugh and pray by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by larry wilson there's little joy in living do you say then we are happy who can say them nay we've lived enough of joy this summer day for many a lifetime let us laugh and pray end of poem this recording is in the public domain Weather by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Weather, weather, what care we weather, whether you are in your cruel mood? We're together, so let be, rain or sunshine, all is good. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. May in the Morning by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama May in the morning, flushed with rosy gold, Young radiant day with all your tale untold. Oh, stay upon the mountain, go not down to noon or eve, Sigh not to be full grown, but keep your virgin eyes And only be perpetual morning in eternity. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Invitation by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Come into the house, sweetheart, built for me and thee, with a lover's mystic art. Dwell in it with me we've a rainbow for a roof windows framed in gold curtains of a silver woof with red roses in their fold glimmering on walls that are 
old as the morning star see the flooring for thy feet lilies overstrew and thy couch of meadow sweet fragrant is with dew there's a water mirror smooth for thy rose face to look in there's a thrush's song to soothe a moon wheel thy dreams to spin here's thy gown of saffron silk and thy kirtle white as milk i've dew diamonds for thy hair ring to fit thy hand we will travel with bare feet through the fairy land with the rain upon our brows and the sunshine in our eyes we will live within the house god has builded for the wise giving endless length of lease in eternal peace end of poem this recording is in the public domain what he sings by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida words set to the blackbird's lilt liquid gold on roses spilt love my love love me love for i love thee sweet's the day as sweet the night love is all a wild delight love my love love me love for i love thee birds are scarcely safe a nest ere the rose lights in the east love my love love me love for i love thee now the yellow cowslip's born now the flower is on the thorn love my love love me love for i love thee gold is wove across the green sallows wear a silvery sheen love my love love me love for i love thee see the flirting daffodil shakes her golden kirtle still love my love love me love for i love thee two go laughing hand in hand children in a fairy land love my love love me love for i love thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Morning by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. A thrush is asleep in the passion flower, a blackbird dreams in the rose's bower. Short sleep and a note at dawn. Wake, little birds, the dark is flown. Another sleep and then a trill. Little birds, the sun is above the hill world's light and a shower of gold for meadows abroad beneath the wold fields of flower and a trickle of gems in the running stream and dew diadems for weeds that have won the beauty prize worth that's worthless to common eyes joy for man and the heart of a child for some grown old and a rapture wild for the child with wings that have swept the skies who may happily remember paradise end of poem this recording is in the public domain rose tide by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by sonia rose tide summer matron beautiful with a laughing babe on either arm and troop of rosy youngsters following adventurous on thy steps in sweet alarm with chubby hands that cling each unto each or sudden timorous pull thy saffron robe that sweeps the verdurous lawn mother of roses queen of golden dawn goddess of laughter worshipping we greet thee and thy brood be hastened thy white feet knowest thou beloved 
how withered and how gray the green earth grows when thou art absent long or how the day wearies of life and fails too soon away in all the woods there is not heard a song these deeply curtaining boughs of velvet green that drop from azure heaven to flowery sward not then are seen but all the skies are barred by rigid forms that yearn for thy return by weeping clouds that thine aloofness mourn o oh, coming from the seaward with blue eyes in sunshine drowned and music in thy mouth and threaded hair on which the daylight lies as gold to gold incarnate soul of youth matured in beauty tender ardent face where all things fair and ripe and sweet flower and fruit in perfect grace of colour and of splendour meet o voice of nightingale o song of thrush ceasing with the woodland's murmurous hush dear fellow traveller of the royal sun o let him go alone stay thou with us undo not what thou hast so goodly done thou wilt not ruin thus our gardens and our choirs enwrought by thy desires see how the gold rose hangs upon its green thou fair the rose's queen bid it stay so for ever canst thou take thy mild breath from our airs and let the blast of winter lay our hearts and meadows waste hushing thy song to hear his discord wake sweet do not leave us soon to thee we bring our weary and our sick that thou mayst lay thy healing touch upon them strengthening our failing hope and sunning all away the ice dews of our dread o oh, let thy rose bloom on the wasted cheek thy verdure close untenanted the grave that winter hath already dug beyond the golden corn that skirts the track of that funereal path will take thee from us on one weeping morn end of poem this recording is in the public domain Sun Glamour by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama Sun Glamour My bonny rose tree, you are more dear to me than diamonds in a string or rubies in a ring. From the seas far away, through the greens of the May, at his bidding have I come unto my lover's home. To the dear eyes of love, to the cuckoo of the dove, to the lark in the blue, at the world of my lover true. Now's the harvest of the rose, when the sweet south wind blows, and sun glamour lights the land, as we too go hand in hand. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Night by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Jason in Panama. Night The old brown clock that purrs to us by night and day, And treacherously whispers thus our lives away, Its heart beats throbbing through the light of morning's bliss, Will promise all the livelong night a day like this. End of poem this recording is in the public domain. Hours by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Sweet as ours were Eden bowers Swaying grasses, floating flowers All blown one lovely way when the soft south winds at play under our hedge of rose where the hill water flows a little mother water hen surrounded by her brood of ten flutters in the shadow there by the open meadow sweets our forest walk green and dusk for lingering talk cool as the sea nymphs grot when the sun is high and hot we have sunflowers in a row, out where the west's aglow. We have hollyhocks and lilies, 
hyacinths and daffodillies pansy pea and rose enchanting in our pleasaunts flaunting bees go haunting there and overhead the lavender white butterflies are in the air sundial beside the rose marks how swift the glad day goes finger long and black following grimly on time's track peacock stiff with pride jeweled like an eastern bride glance of insolence seeking for offence ebon crested head tale of splendor spread hoary orchard trees with boughs like wreathed lattices little lamps of red and yellow where the fruit is mellow yonder's a bushy grove alive with songs of love as all the songbirds of the air did celebrate their bridals there blackbird and wood guest each lord of his own nest bullfinch tit and thrush at home in thorn and ivy bush forth from every throat a song when the daylight waxeth long for now the rain falls over every bird within the cover poet is as well as lover fairies trip and pass across the lush and purpled grass where the shade is deep and wide they dart about and hide under the canopies of the limes and chestnut trees when the summer's gone ice on field and lawn skies may gloom and glower still our joys in flower when the clouds have found us golden walls are round us where the sun doth enter there with us to winter no one knoweth where he goeth when the storm wind bloweth and the stream no longer floweth only we who live always in his fostering rays end of poem this recording is in the public domain home by rosa mulholland read for LibriVox.org by eva davis his happy house was built for our content and planted in its green environment long years ere we in living flesh abode and living souls were bid to live for god its eager door stands open on the breeze admitting homage from the bowing trees saluting crowds of flitting shades that go through quiet halls and chambers to and fro like tender mindful ghosts of some who were happy and blithesome in an old time here within these old thick walls still aureoled by orchard blossoms and the spring's young gold on ancient woods a mighty darkling host in wild sun glamour all astray and lost house ever in a reverie of joy mysterious out of thee heaven hath inhabitants if dost hear the echo of their bliss who are so near though all apart we may not wonder thou dost ponder listening wrapped in silence now and spread thy roof like brooding wings of dove as shelter still for happy hearts that love and call thee home next door to happier heaven out yonder where the sunset clouds are riven we see the track yet shrink our earth-bound feet in thee life throbs so all-sufficient sweet each of thy story chambers hath its dreams the glorious aftermath of lives well lived fields ripely sown with flowers amid the grass long mown the sweet of them is in the air like kindred sweets that up the stair blow on the warm west wind of may out of the meadow's heart and stay about their nooks and passages as glad to linger where love is 
up in our garden chamber high mid chestnut boughs in orient sky the long wide windows see the dawn rose gold when dark veils are withdrawn and green earth lying fair beneath throws upward many a purple wreath there pipes the blackbird's magic flute the thrush tunes up his tender lute here thrill a hundred vile strings while feathered minstrels clap their wings who sleeps within this chamber hears such music with awaking ears across the meadow a sun gleam shines all along the running stream the hemlock caught in a sun mist gleams by the hedgerows water kissed the ragweed in her golden crown a beggar queen stares the mild daisy down the grass is glad as any living thing each tiny blade a quivering wing a bit of broken woodland owns tis dark even in morn glory and a lark with ringing rapturous note continuous shares from the sun his exuberant joy with us and here's a little nested room warm lined like home of birds mid bushes where the wind roar as he will can only rock our sleep while musically the rains weep here purrs and flame the odorous bough shed by great trees that rock and sow and moan of turbulent spirits hurled into their arms from this our world to do a penal term for deeds that sown for flowers proved loathsome weeds just at the window low beneath the eaves a starling nests behind bay leaves within the roof and with her noisy brood bides fearless of our human neighborhood this orchard half a rood of bloom pushing a meadow to get room for apple trees long past their prime and pear trees bent with fruit and time was once a garden redolent of rose and lily and of violets empurpled by the april rain that wets the hyacinth and crowned with living gold of sunflowers burnishing the distant wold and hollyhocks upon whose glancing spears shone rubies caught from suns of passing years thick set upon their slender flanks mid amber bosses far out where their ranks and file of splendor reared each one his crest to guard a dream world in the kindling west all gone yet mid the long lush grasses still unbidden springs the joyous daffodil and still the aerial blue anemone the darling wind-flower lives and laughs with glee the hyacinths an ever hardy race borne by the winging birds from place to place flit ever making colonies neath canopies of the great old world trees the hemlock now imperially doth hold the ground they drove him from of old and lifts his head all o'er sown with white and spreads his giant leaves as with the right to crush usurpers even the reckless foe who robbed him many and many a year ago he has survived a thousand follies sweet of scent and colour weakness doomed to meet death from deep-rooted power yet see under the hedge and apple tree the lowly things that have defied in their humility his pride the primrose and the simple cowslip bell the crocus and the little deer speed well now in deep summer friends will come and go within cool rooms where the tall lime trees throw a radiant green shade on glamorous days when burns the sun on open lattices o oh, rare gold house our lives are folded in between thy sheltering arms and but begin to know all joy smile on and keep us warm wrapped in thy heart 
and safe from all alarm. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. O oh, May in the Morning by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida O oh, May, O oh, May in the Morning And oh, but the world was sweet There came without word of warning One, pale, with winged feet O oh, May, O oh, May of the thrushes O oh, May of the blackbird's bliss, The water sang in the rushes, My love gave me a kiss. O oh, May, O oh, May in the morning, My lover, away, away, Stole without word of warning, Black is the winter day. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Death and the Soul by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson Impatient Soul Door of death, open, open unto me, and let me in. Door narrow and thin, and adamantine strong. Beyond thee God is, and the Spirit's love kiss. I long, long, long to break with violence through thee. Death O rude and noisy soul, thy clamor cease, For I will ope only to patient hope, And in her company through me thou'lt surely pass, As the sun's rays through glass. Meanwhile God holds the key, And I am shut up his fields of peace. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Year's Round by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida Another round is done, another year is run, since thou from me didst turn thy face away to travel where there is nor year nor day and yet i reckon here another year winter's cold and the summer's blossoming autumn's flush and the wild sweet of the spring o sun's gold wheel are you not tired of turning o stars of steel give over your cold burning Flowers shrivel and fade, a grave is made. Sick earth, will you not wither up and die, Since in your bosom cold my love doth lie? End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Question by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org By Greg Giordano Newport Ritchie, Florida And is your new-found knowledge then so sweet, Death's mystery, that your love now understands? Where travel you, O oh, unreturning feet? What clasp you now, O oh, tender, seeking hands? Your eyes no longer see my light of day. What sun irradiates you and leaves me blind? What blithe companions make your spirit gay? What happy weaklings know you strong and kind? One sits alone within a darkened home And counts the hours since laughing forth you went With promise of return. You will not come so long away and are you then content the hearth is swept and purrs the happy flame a chair beside your waiting chair is set now rings the joyful hour when still you came feet past the door your chair is empty yet 
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Silence by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Greg Giordano. Newport Ritchie, Florida. Thou mystery of silence bearing still a seal upon thy lips and in thy hand grasping the folds that veil thine unseen face sister of death in virgin drapery white as the summer moonbeams with round arm and gracious breast and foot that might be time to music yet doth neither rise nor fall wake from thy trance unveil and answer me o oh, deaf and cruel shall my passion strike concealment from thy marble front or shall rather my patience kneel and humbly kiss the hem of thy closed shroud in trusted hides from this sad soul a joy unspeakable that when the mystic hour at last may ring will sun-like rend the cloud twixt thee and me end of poem this recording is in the public domain the watchtower by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by betty b the watchtower to worship the flame of the fire our hearts have lit with the purest of souls desire we too sit above o'er the high watch towers the suns are alight and circling through hours on hours they travel the night o oh, chill are the stars up there on a distant trend and little our love knows where their travels tend if spirits can live in their shine we may not see but our cinder that's yours and mine to you and me is the seed of fire to sow in the years of ours for the grass that's yet to grow for the birth of flowers and while spirit to spirit clings as lips to lips what reck we of far-off things in light or eclipse a hand in a hand held fast cheek pressed to cheek what matters an age going past days or a week while the little rapturous flame that burns for us though fitful and never the same continuous is enough of the mystery of the heat of life for lovers like you and me husband and wife but dear when the sweet earth fire evanisheth and froze is our heart's desire by blast of death shall one on the far watch tower alone on the height seek flame in a blackened hour of a bitter night and ask of the god who winds his sons in a ring who maketh his fires in kinds unperishing a torch in the darkened years to search for love through the realm where the circling spheres burn on above o oh, love the flame of our fire that burns so sweet the flame of our heart's desire alight at our feet the sacred flame of our hearth to-day's but an old common trick of the earth to keep out the cold a blaze lit up in a camp on a battle morn while soldiers shout and tramp at blast of a horn by what hearth do you sit of the fires on high i'm coming my love to it time fly fly end of poem this recording is in the public domain Preference by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Preference. I am not lonely, for I feel you near, although your place is vacant to my eyes, and evermore I know the sad surprise of shrouded rooms and no voice in my ear. I am not all forlorn, nor do I fear long wakeful nights and joyless morning skies and lengthening eves when daylight slowly dies 
along the sun-tide of the perfect year for you are always close to me in faith and rather would i follow you through death into your strange unknown eternal place where i again might see you face to face than live forgetting you by you forgot possessed of newborn joys that know you not end of poem this recording is in the public domain pain by rosa mulholland read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida my lovely lady whose sad name is pain all lonely liveth in her mystic bower beyond the sun above the wind and rain her garden fenced is with white thorn flower beneath the thorny white flower laden boughs she sitteth all day long in gathered shade within the circle of her narrow house her pallid face a moonlike light hath made her dusky hair is wove with bud and spine her spirit eyes are dark with mystery her lips that show no rose incarnadine are dumb as sculptured lips of martyrs be her brow is white with dreams and her pale hands pray ever palm to palm and scarcely stir against her quiet breast an angel stands with eyes of love and mutely watches her end of poem this recording is in the public domain Wings by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Wings. Unto your angel, when the dawn was red, I spoke. Oh, let me soar to him this day. Lend me thy wings, that I may flee away and see him where he bideth now. I said. About the morn, like store of roses shed, I saw earth glories yet toward the ray of highest heaven my track of travel lay where bliss holds you from me uncomforted there bowed i near you colouring with love's breath the suns that shine on you and whispering sweet words we used to say till day was gone oh knew you of my tears and the downward wing that went from you now angel take your own i cried and wingless stood and wept for death end of poem this recording is in the public domain the vision by rosa maholland read for LibriVox.org by nemo under my load of grief at length i slept and saw you standing in our chamber gay and tall and strong, even like as yesterday. You smiled on me, who had so moaned and wept, while in a maze of fear toward you I stepped, in dread to touch a cloud that would not stay, for I'd seen you dead and borne away. So fearing dream and waking nearer crept, and found you warm to touch, then to your side I clung in rapture. Death is dead, I cried. There is no death. I held your woolen gown, the dear familiar vesture, drew yours down to my own face, and felt your strong heart beat. I hold you, love, and death's a lie, a cheat. You gave me tender looks and kisses. Still you drew me to your breast and sat with me. So face to face and breast to breast were we. Oh, love, I cried, go not again. I will be with you when you go, for good or ill. Not so, you said. Then I, is it to be that no more joy for all eternity? We taste as one who did all love fulfill? Not so, 
again you said, but you must wend obedient and apart till God shall send. Then loosened you your hold. I felt you draw your gown from my close grip. No more I saw but felt you go. Yet am I comforted who know you live, although I saw you dead. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Closed Door by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Closed Door The door of heaven has closed on thee. I stand this side of eternity. The rainy wind and the bitter skies, still mine, and life with its mysteries. The world's tears and the drift on the pain, the soul's cry and the blast with the rain. The light to hate and the dark to shun, and joy to remember with the sun but thou away on a flowery sod walking with saints in the garden of god be full thy joy and no more alone i'll live with it till it grows my own if thou wert back in the world again the wind might blow and the rain might rain the old sweet heaven of thee and me would be heaven enough for me and thee end of poem this recording is in the public domain Dread by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Dread, the world's a fire and none to save. Wind howl and rain rave, the world is all a wandering grave. The earth is but a blackened stone, whirling round the greater one, frozen sun whose light is done. Shepherd, what use in your crook, scientist? for your outlook poet who's to read your book all the jewels of the east gold and silver of the west buried are in ruin's breast wheel of terror dreadful ball black with death containing all bodies built since adam's fall now are all the souls were born to your years of night and morn gathered by an angel's horn End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Silver Horn by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. The Silver Horn. When I awoke from dreams this morn, methought I heard a silver horn shrilling towards me from afar, as if from some faint setting star oh i said the stars are falling or some spirit calling calling summons me o'er hill and hollow i will rise and i will follow i have climbed the hills all day fallen and fainted on the way met no spirit will that horn sound for me another morn end of poem this recording is in the public domain The Ark, translated from the Latin, by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org, by Greg Giordano, Newport Ritchie, Florida. O tender heart, strong ark which doth enshrine the whole sweet law that rules the heart of man, no longer held as slaves beneath a ban, grateful and free we live by love divine o heart o sanctuary undefiled of that new law of love unto us given a veil more precious than of old was riven a temple holier than the ancients piled what living heart is there that will not come at his redeeming call that doth not sigh to give him love for love and will not fly unto his heart our everlasting home end of poem this recording is in the public domain evening by rosa mulholland read for librivox.org by sonia 
evening in sober ending of a glamorous day the shadows lengthen wistful grows the light the herds are far off and the veil is lone the mountain mourns upon its purple throne accepting darkness and resigned to night the sea is hiding in its veils of grey all is consummated a god is slain beneath the welkin and is no more sun earth is empalled great nature's head is bowed under the burden of a loathsome shroud light is extinct the course of life is run day lies in death and may not rise again but even now upon the pall is war a jewel signalling to soulful seers in characters of light is writ that he the sun god is alive in mystery life-giving of his love in other spheres there will be mourning more and more and more end of poem this recording is in the public domain the forsaken mother by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida ireland's lament my dewy fields are sad and lone the mountain tops of frowning stone the rain rains tears the sea is gray for little children gone away oh where is through that i could see the little faces round my knee that i could hear the running feet that ran between my hedges sweet i'll see no more your big blue eyes no more i'll hear your shouts and cries you grow and turn to heartless men unlike the men that stepped the glen you're cradled in the stranger's land the stranger takes your wedded hand your little children are not mine by hill and glen i weep and pine o sons of mine that leave me lone your ears will ever hear my moan on alien hills by alien streams your mother's face will haunt your dreams i see the ruddy lights no more that shone from window and from door no more the house dog's friendly bark rings cheery in the winter's dark when night is on my pastures green i miss my music sweet and keen the piping herd that whistled shrill while sat the moon twixt wood and hill my sons will you come back again my children grown to sturdy men come back come back from east and west and make your homes upon my breast your mother's ear is listening still to hear across the purple hill your feet come tramping from the sea across the fields and glens to me your joyful shouts upon the wind your loving words and laughter kind in voices of the midnight streams i hear them only in my dreams end of poem this recording is in the public domain ireland revisited by rosa mulholland read for LibriVox.org by sonia ireland revisited you're going home alanna to the home you never seen the home that you weren't born in though sure you ought to been the land that she was born in that's now your old grandmother the sweetest land in under heaven i don't care where's the other the girl she was had hair like gold and a curl in it and her eyes they had the sort of colour that's like bits of irish skies you're laughing at me honey but i'm grown so old you see i might be led to talk about the girl that once was me twas she that was the call in thus the day that seamus said a few words she was glad to hear and still a bit afraid 
herself was milkin in the field the lark was in the blue he came and took the pail says he it's heavy dear for you you'll go and see the house a store you'll know it by the thatch in under the white elder flowers the door is on the latch the swallows do be very fond of making the nests there inside just by the fire you'll see your grandfather's straw chair he'll go to see the neighbor's child they changed a bit they say and hair that was as bright as mine is maybe turned to gray but gershers will be grown like you and take you by the hand for they'll be glad to see you coming back to the old land you'll go into the chapel and you'll tell me if you find the three old trees fawn in it that stood shaking in the wind and nodding at the chapel porch as if they wanted in ach if it was myself was you but envy is a sin end of poem this recording is in the public domain A Lay of the Famine by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia A Lay of the Famine Oh, hear you how the night wind sighs around the craggy reek, Its voice keens high above the wave that thunders in the creek. A rune, a rune, arouse you, and high across the moor, Ten miles away there's bread, they say, to feed the starving poor god save you eileen born a store and guide your naked feet and keep the failing life in us till you come back with meat she kissed her father's palsied hand her mother's wasting cheek and whirled out on the driving storm beyond the craggy reek but god is kinder on the bog than man is in the town and eileen quails before the stranger's harsh rebuke and frown no bread is in her wallet stored but on the lonesome heath she lifts her empty hands to heaven and prays for speedy death oh you lulu what sight is this what forms come by the reek as thin and white as is the mist upon the mountain's peak like mist they glide across the bog a pale and ghastly band the foremost crosses eileen's path and grips her by the hand dear daughter we have suffered sore but we are safe at last for god has taken us to him and bids yourself make haste so hurry to our cabin lone and dig a grave full deep and underneath the white bog flower our bodies lay to sleep lest winter winds should wreck the walls and throw them on our bones and stranger birds should tear our flesh from out the tumbled stones astorine don't be slow or long so you may quickly come and share the sweetness of our rest in god's eternal home now when the sun went in the sea and rain winds gan to weep fared eileen to the cabin alone and dug a grave full deep and when the moon was high in heaven above the thundering wave outstretched her slender body lay upon that new-made grave end of poem this recording is in the public domain the factory girl by rosa mulholland read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida chose it instead of america you see it was nearer home plenty of work in the north they said and so i riz and come nine of us on the bit of land and failed it at last with the rent no price to be got for the cow at all and the landlord his heart is flint rest of them went to the huts i thought i'd be able to arm something to help them along working up here at the yarn but with the sickness and fines and the wages so tarrible small i'd never a halfpenny to send i was no help to them at all fines all that i wove my loom was bad and it run wrong with the web and the weavin twas ruined afore it was done 
finds for a mouthful of water when your heart was just ready to burst with the roastin heat of the place and the ragin fire o oh, your thirst oftener sick nor well even at the best o oh, your prime for ye see you're drippin wet at your work the whole of the time only a shift and a petticoat on ye not enough o' clothes to cover a decent girl and keep her modest god knows and thin when the bell is rung and ye run out into the street it's the sharp east wind on the frost that your bones have got to meet and your bit of a shawl is not much use to keep out the stabs of the cold it's that way when you're young but you never live to be old a quiet place to be sick in i deed so ye may say four of us lies in the bed at night i have it myself all day will ye write to my mother and tell her my heart is sore that i hadn't a penny to send her my love and nothing more for when i'd armed a shillin and threepence the threepence was all i'd to get the shillin went for the fine on the crooked loom that set i everything wrong as it went what mather twas me had to pay i'd better starved where i was in the fields twixt the bog and the say slime and dirt where you stand at your work and the smells derive you mad you're told to go to hell if you cry but hell can't be half as bad i know i'm going somewhere doctor i see it like print in your face but i hope it won't be there thank god there's another place end of poem this recording is in the public domain Glen Malur by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Glen Malur, a world song in the running water, red am I with the red of slaughter. When storm and torrent sweep the glen, I mourn the fate of gallant men. I wash their graves and keep them green, pranked with flowers of golden sheen. I chant their praise when summer's kind i keen for them on the winter wind i run i rush to the cleansing sea and wash me clean in the wave of the free yet still am i red with the red of blood in valley shadow in mountain flood michael dwyer still sits in his chair on the red rock up on the mountain there and the roofless barrack with eyes of bale stares at him from the heart of the vale it threats me as i hurry along for the mindfulness of my ceaseless song but i will sing when stone on stone the baleful walls to dust are gone will sing of the patriot hearts that bled slaughter to dye my waters red will sing and sing to the souls of men my world song from an irish glen men of to-day ye are cold and tame care not for praise care not for blame ye you count your sheep in the mountain cave and feed your kine on the hero's grave no more to your crags the eagle clings on lugnacolia he spreads his wings the rabbit thrives and the wily fox lives at ease in his hole in the rocks some of your old men grieve as i talk of the brave awhile and die the young are fleeing to happier lands where's room for souls and where's work for hands only the river only the river that knows no death and will sing forever only the ever running water running red with the red of slaughter hears the battle cry of the brave ringing from the patriot's grave and winds it into a water song the song of all days that will live world long end of poem this recording is in the public domain. Maury's Vision by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia Maury's Vision 
wished honey i'll tell you the story it chanced in the summer one night when the bog that does still be so black was all over a dazzle of white with the foam blowing in from the sea and the clouds streeling down from the skies and the moon looking on like myself the poor soul with the tears in her eyes that i cried as i wind with the dinder the ache was in all of my bones on account of the heavy day's work picking up the loose stones and i earning a bit for the childer till in on the floor of the cabin i stumbled at last and i barred up the door i was saying a prayer at the old broken chair with my knees on the clay and Aunie, my eldest was answering him that went over the say when i looked at the door i was sure i had barred with the two of my hands and i seen it was standing wide open and laid my commands on Auni to get up at once and to shut out the dreep of the mist and he upped and he went to the door and he hammered it shut with his fist and on went the two of us then with the prayers and myself have asleep with my face in my hands on the chair and the heart in me bursting to weep i looked up again as i said the amen and i seen that the door was standing wide back from the moon and the light on the floor and i let out a curse god forgive me on top of my prayer i was meaning no harm but it riz of itself from my heart of despair bad luck to you Oni, says i have you no hands at all that ye stand up to fasten the door and ye lave it there back to the wall and the boy got lamenting and said he had done it and then between trembling and crying he upped and he done it again the sobbing got into his throat and he crept into bed and i drove home the bar with a blow and lay down by his head but before i right settled to sleep i just took a back glance at the door it was open as wide as my eyes and the light streaming in on the floor i jumped out of bed with a groan for i seen with my sight that some one was there on the threshold and darkened the white of the mist and the moon and i knew by the set of the head and the square of the shoulders twas one was come back from the dead twas ehrman my husband himself with a child on each arm and he holding the pair to his breast as if keeping them warm twas the two that was laid by his side in the grave at the kill the day my heart broke when i left him there sleeping their fill i stood and i looked at the three and the sweat on my face teemed down with the fear at the thought of a ghost in the place till my starin got hold of his looks and i seen that och hon, as kind like as ever his two eyes were stuck in my own i gather up courage and spoke and o oh, ehrman i says will you come to the fire and sit down and i'll rake up a blaze for it's cold and it's pale that you're looking yourself on the two that i never again thought to see in this world were us through will you give me the sweet little gersha here into my breast till i comb out the gold of her hair till i give her a taste of the milk that'll bring the red colour back into her cheeks when she opens her eyes and finds out this her mummy that speaks will you let me wake up little dermot and see the blue eyes that once were the light of our home oh my husband i cries for a kind of a madness had risen up and burned in my brain and i thought they had come back to stay and were living again then ehrman spoke out and his voice was as sad and as low as the wind from the sea when the waves do be coming in slow and i cannot my woman he says for it's only we come on an errand from god and it soon will be facing back home o oh, maury says he don't be cursing the children no more see these little pair that god sent you to look at a store twas their prayers and their love that led me into heaven and to him and the soul of a child is more precious than life or than limb don't poison their innocence maury the three that you have will be as for some day from your hands for it's not to the grave ye are going says ehrman says he with your smile or your frown when there's one that is coaxing them up don't be driving them down oh never again will i do it says i when the moan in my throat led the word to my tongue but oh ehrman my own will you give me the children a minute and kiss me says i tis yourself never needed the askin 
in them days gone by then airmen came near me and drooped the young childer to rest for a couple of seconds or so on the broad o' my breast and he leaned a bit nearer and put his two lips to my own and he kissed me the way that he used to my husband och own the cold of him went through my soul oh the sting of the cold of the face of himself against mine oh the chill of the mould on the cheeks of my babies it froze and it killed me outright and i fell on my face in a heap and i lay there all night all agone i'd more living to do for i came back again with the light of the dawn in the skies i woke up to my pain and i heard like a twitter of birds and the whispering sigh twas himself and the childer that waited all night for to say their good-bye a dream did ye say look at here did ye ever behold the purplety blue of a body that's frozen to death with the cold it's the blue of my lips since the night when my dead husband kissed my mouth at the door straining out through the moon and the mist and saving your presence just here in the warm of my breast where the two little wishy ones cuddle like birds in a nest is a couple of patchety scars like a burn leaves behind they're as white as the bog flowers that blows in the breath of the wind oh sure but they left their own mark on me there now go on and lave me with god and themselves that he sent me mavrone the moon never shines through the mist with that growl from the sea but i think they come back with himself's invitation for me end of poem this recording is in the public domain Maury Og by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Maury Og. My name is little Maury Og. I live at Girton Clove. It's over there, beyond the bog, just where the sea is rough. And that's our house in, in the cave. The rock is for our floor. In winter, sure, the thundering wave comes tumbling through the door. We've got a wishy bit of land between the bog and sea it's that can grow the taties grand when storms let em be i'm going on sixteen year old it's me that ups at night for when the moon is big and gold the tide is at its height i do go wadin from the sands the water's round my neck and i be gropin with my hands to haul in the sea wreck oh musha yes i'm always drowned but little matter so when wreck is spread out on the ground to make the taties grow it's me that always does be sent goin foreign every year for still we have to pay the rent and clay is awful dear it's me that picks the hops that grows in land that's not like ours where cruel storms never blows and rains is only showers then i do bind the farmer's sheaves and lie the summer's night in under hedges full of leaves till dawning of the light Och, when I bring the money home, it's never half enough to pay the shop that must get some and rind of Girton Clove. I wish the taties wouldn't fail, it's rain that brings the rot, for buying of the indie mail, it's swall is all we've got. Oh, whiles I climb the rock up there and look out on the sea, for there's a sailing ship somewhere will soon be getting me. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Beggar Queen by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia The Beggar Queen Wanderer in the wet and cold, You shall walk in gems arrayed, You shall sit in cloth of gold, Beggar maid, O oh beggar maid. You have lands and you have towers, churches wherein saints have prayed you have gardens full of flowers beggar maid o oh beggar maid ships are sailing on your seas cattle in your meadows tread filled are all your granaries beggar maid o oh beggar maid you have subjects leal and strong waging battle unafraid for the queen they praise in song beggar maid o oh beggar maid wear the robes that fit a queen wear a crown upon your head rule within your valley's green beggar maid o oh beggar maid
End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. The Christmas Candle by Rosa Mulholland, read for LibriVox.org by Larry Wilson. I set the taper in the pane, the Christmas taper got with care, in Advent days by stinted fare, and bade it burn, not ever wane, from morn to night, from night to morn, until the Christ child should be born. So tall it stood, its slender white, encrusted o'er with red and gold and purple, like the kings of old. A crown it wore, its crown of light. Now little flames shine down the street and show the way to traveling feet. I opened wide the cabin door. The frosty air came rushing in. The stars aloft shone faint and thin. I knelt upon the earthen floor, and kneeling so, alone was I. The rest are in eternity. A father, mother, one small maid, and two fair lads. A crowd were around the Christmas taper there, beside the kill I the four had laid. O oh, Christmas taper, shed thy light. There's one who will come for me tonight. But, oh, the world was dark and cold, but lighted my taper's flame, when down the street the Christ child came an ice wreath in his hair of gold and opened his young arms to me now come to where they bide saith he good neighbors is it christmas night ah yes i see my taper's flame still burning as when in he came impelled by its imploring light came in and stood within the door and said o oh, mother weep no more then i fell fast asleep and so you found me. Now I go to them, as bid by him of Bethlehem. Ere my sweet taper wanes, I go. For he, the Christ child, bids me come, where they wait for me in his home. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. St. Kevin and the Lark by Rosa Mulholland Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. St. Kevin and the Lark St. Kevin, who loved God and men and birds, and savage beasts, and gentle flocks and herds, walked solitary in the fields of morn, and praised the light as light were newly born. And, lifting up his hand to bless the sun, for yet another day in God begun, he, praying, walked and walking, prayed and praised, his god with still that blessing hand upraised a lark aloft his matin singing loud dropped sudden from the heart of a gold cloud and perched on kevin's uplift hand and sang and sang until the woodlands rang and rang a wondrous voice uprising from the sod to greet the sun and pierce the ear of god how canst thou thus forsake the golden choir to sing aloud for me my heart's desire said kevin then the bird sang sweet and low and told such secrets as the angels know into the ear of kevin until he forgot the world in heavenly ecstasy so walked he days and nights across the land with that sweet songster perched upon his hand nor ever knew the time until the bird soared to the sun and in the cloud was heard still when o'er irish fields where saint and lark went praising god who scattereth the dark at early morn a mystic song is heard the children cry saint kevin and his bird end of poem this recording is in the public domain gerald ferry by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by sonia Gareth's Ferry The moon is wroth over Avondu, wild clouds before her face are flying, black shadows hang around Rincrew, the gannets from the sea are crying, and where the river flood runs through, the wooded pass, with smothered sighing of pain and fear, what terrifying shout comes startling wood and water, 
with memories grim of fray and slaughter hello there to the wary to the wary garrels a ruinter give the garrels a fairy he lies above the thundering wave by sea or land by ford or river while sea mews perch above his grave great garrels fares no more for ever the winds may lift a voice and rave and cry aloud with sob and shiver the name of one who answers never startling the storm-tossed wood and water with memories fierce of fray and slaughter what ho there to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give brave garrels a fairy in temple michael's gruesome wood and down the frighted rivers flowing the traveller scanneth tree and flood the cloud rack on the night wind blowing over rin crew the point of blood before the angry moon's face going the stream that stumbles hasting slowing and hears that cry thrill wood and water with echoing dread of fray and slaughter hello there to the wary to the wary garrels her rointer give the garrels his fairy but now the summer wind is still the young moon dreams behind the beeches the clouds lie soft on mead and hill clear curve in light the river reaches yet from the deep wood rings a shrill and piercing summons that beseeches never so weird the night owl screeches scaring the peace of wood and water with ghostly dreams of strife and slaughter ho ho there to the wary to the wary garrels her rointer give the garrels a fairy here was the feast and here the fray red lights from every loophole burning and ruddy fires that flamed alway hailed garrels to his own returning no need to send by night or day that angry call that cry of warning to rouse the currents in bitter scorning of slothful sleep by wood and water broken with threats of war and slaughter what ho there to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give the garrels a fairy now temple michael's lights are out death black are stately shrine and castle the grim woods darkle round about the walls where kinsman child and vessel fly that voice whose angry shout marreth the mirth of dance and wassail and with the darkness seems to wrestle frighting the soul by land and water with dreadful dreams of strife and slaughter hello there to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give the garrels a fairy the garrel's wife is on the shore with pallid face and whitening tresses that were as red as golden ore and while her cold lip prays and blesses the soul of him in lone ardmore with tears and whispered tendernesses that speak a faithful heart's distresses like moan that follows fray and slaughter rises a wail over wood and water for love's grace to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give the garrel his fairy o oh, lift him from his narrow bed out where the ocean waves are singing their dirges for great garrels dead and set st declan's bells a-ringing let holy prayers be sung and said with flesh of golden censer swinging and hush that voice by wood and water that cry that rings of fray and slaughter what ho there to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give the garrel his fairy carry him back to avondu and make his bed by that sweet river beneath the heights of bold rincrew where temple michael frowns forever from the wild horns of the sea mew the sleeping saints will miss him never may god his restless soul deliver and hush that voice by wood and water that cry that breathed of strife and slaughter ho ho there to the wary to the wary garrels a rointer give the garrel his fairy now lay him on his floating bier and bid the lovely river bear him his kinsman's sword his widow's tear his children's simple prayers are near him his startled foeman grasps the spear 
comes mighty Geralt back to scare him? Great Geralt, by the river faring again across the dark black water, was stained erewhile by blood and slaughter? But now that cry is hushed, put up the wary. He lies at rest, great Geralt crossed his ferry. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Lament of Fethir by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Lament of Fethir. I walked with my pain of heavy loss and cruel gain under the rain of the summer midnight glorious, and my bosom could not bear the pang of the sword thrust there, moaned out in despair with the moan of the great sea flood. I saw in the southern skies the sign of the cross arise and bright on my wildered sight sudden shine out victorious i heard all the flowers of the earth rejoicing in their birth though they flourished and were nourished with the human heart's warm blood oh the sweet and startled moon slid down the sky full soon the strong stars quailed and failed in their high eternal places and the heart of the bold sea wave its long death sigh out gave as broken it found a grave and went headlong into the sand far distant beacons flamed and the planets shamed flashed red and waned and hid like affrighted faces and the dumb trees stood on the verge of the wood drear with fear like ghouls or damned souls stood up straight in their hate of the gloom of the darkened land my feet passed on through the night and the bright stirring and whirring of life with eyes of splendour while darksome things with wings made music as of strings in the hearing of the purple air and a spirit laden with all ills came down out of the misty hills with a legion of other spirits to attend her weeping they went in a ghostly trail like a fleet of sail swift and frail i saw them sink and fail like wreaths of foam on the motionless ocean out there my lips were dumb but my soul cried come o death without breath and with sweet closed eyes sleep waking a star high set twixt thy quiet brows of jet and the dove above the peace in thine ice-cold breast i will give thee my hand in thy hand i will rise and depart i will go to thy land to thy heart i will give my heart with its tortured burning and aching my feet to thy feet will i bind that thou most kind will lead them and speed them leaving no trace in this earthly place speed them away i pray ere another day to the unknown world of our rest End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. All Souls Night by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. All Souls Night. All Souls Day we had mass at morn. At crow of cock the dear Christ came. Down on the altar as newly born. To love us and take away our blame crowds of us gathered round him then ate of his feast and went away to think of the souls of long dead men and pray for their rest the live long day what souls in heaven and what souls still outside wandering lonesomely on the black seashore or the bare black hill or lashed by the wind on the old thorn tree sure we who love them live as we please the good and the bad of us walking the road when the sun is shining or sitting at ease by the side of the fire thanks be to god mary maloney your house is dark only a little bit over the way dead as a corpse and cold and stark my house is as bright as day i mind the night that your man was drowned more than a couple of years ago never was buried in holy ground no more of him did you ever know my man and our children seven are gone from me these years on years and every one of them safe in heaven i have no fears and i drop no tears 
but still in all on this blessed night when the suffering souls are free to come into the warmth and into the light and sit with friends in our old loved home i sweep my hearth and i sweep my floor and i set a candle in every room and a torch of bogdiel at the door to shine far into the midnight gloom who knows what lonesome souls of men with never a friend left now on earth may draw to the light and venture then over the threshold and sit by the hearth so mary maloney shut up your door that shows no light and come home with me and maybe you'll see your man once more sure if he's in prison to-night he's free o oh lord we watched on our knees and prayed and mary and me we saw them come wandering in as if half afraid and glad to be welcomed to someone's home mary maloney she saw her man i saw not mine nor my children seven i couldn't because no spirit can come that night if he's safe in heaven end of poem this recording is in the public domain new tipperary by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by betty b new tipperary said the men of tipperary master of our sweat and soil great from our persistent toil rich in corn and wine and oil of our strain and our turmoil like a story that is told you have got our yearly gold loosen now your savage hold of the starving young and old said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary we've a thousand friends and more brothers who are very poor down along black water shore with a tyrant at their door life for them is life and death give them light and give them breath put your sword up in its sheath so this grave petition saith said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary since you will not hear our prayer we will take a brother's care of our brothers in despair of our own will give them share grant us of the over rent we have paid you with content grant us twenty five per cent ten is for their nourishment said the man of tipperary said the man of tipperary you have turned a sullen ear deaf as one who will not hear yet our meaning is full clear without favor without fear stand we up before your face in the pride of our old race stand up in our ancient place cry resistance or disgrace said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary fill no more the tyrant's hand he denies our just demand we will give him back his land leave the town our fathers planned we will build us roof and room where the heather is in bloom gray old fathers quit your home little children rise and come said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary oh it was a gallant sight when the foremost in the fight walked out in the broad sunlight shelterless against the night left the long-loved happy hearth left the house that saw their birth wanders now upon the earth said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary we will build us a new town right beneath the landlord's frown let the old one tumble down though the stones are all our own let the rains of winter fall or deserted roof and wall let the storm wind cry and call in the homes of each and all said the men of tipperary said the men of tipperary yonder by thy open road we will pitch our tents abroad let the master of the sod kneel and ask his gold from god in the still deserted street never more wherein may meet clasping hands and hurrying feet life and liberty are sweet gallant men of tipperary end of poem this recording is in the public domain a warning by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by sonia a warning moya's blue-eyed boy with the yellow hair him that the fairies took last year i seen him to-day in the fair 
follying round with one had a basket on her arm same as a human woman the lord between us and harm lookin like you or me and a smile in her eye tastin and pricing the butter like one that wanted to buy and her casting at nora mulligan with her smile the girl that's growing up so handsome all the while let nora's mother be watching her or she go where moya's bochel went to their sports below it's the likes o them that's wanted young and gay to keep them gentry company until the judgment day end of poem this recording is in the public domain midsummer night by rosa mulholland read for LibriVox.org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida it happened one midsummer night and i gettin home slow a bit tired and lonesome alone in the gray of the road to go and i thinkin i'd rather i hadn't much further be myself all alone just meself in the presence of god not the ghost of a moon but a glory of stars in the sky light enough to be seein the dark by and light sure to keep your feet out of holes and with never a call or a sigh from man beast or wind and the valley down there sound asleep when a sudden right out of the breast of the mountain there comes a brattle o music the like of it never was heard the silver of trumpets the pipin on gold and the rollin of drums and singin that wasn't the voices of woman or angel or bird just as sudden it it stopped with a snap and a crash and a blare and right over my head came the rush of a million of wings they drive in the silence before them and beat in the air and hurtlin and surgeon and circlin and rings upon rings and if mad to get into the breast of the mountain and then while i stared all around me and over my head and could spy not a thing but the stars sure the music was at it again and the rush of the wings between me and the stars in the sky and so for an hour while well, i tried to be sayin a prayer now i'll ask you to look at that mountain out there in the sun and it's smilin so innocent what do you think went on there on that midsummer night when them gintry were havin their fun end of poem this recording is in the public domain song by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida where has fickle joy outgone yonder lie her golden shoon here's the rose she lately wore there's the lute she'll touch no more hist she sends a messenger with a playful word from her take my gentle substitute wears my rose and wakes my lute gray of habit gray of face sweet content will hold my place though she wears no golden shoe she'll go all the way with you end of poem this recording is in the public domain the ring by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by greg giordano newport ritchie florida mysterious circuit travelled by the sun that is a ring a circlet of pure gold a belt that binds together new and old a tale that's ever telling never told an ending race that's always just begun love took the gold and hammered out the ring 
burnished with joy, with sorrow welded strong, out of the sweet enclosure banished wrong, and wound the whole into a tender song. For such as you and me, dear love, to sing, our little ring is symbol unto us, of air and earth and water, all that he created, who gives living souls to be, undying like himself, of death made free, in sun-like, ring-like, life continuous. End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Knowledge by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Betty B. Knowledge. We thought we knew the beauty of the world, the sky blue noon, the splendors of sunset, the daffodils of dawn in light unfurled, June's tears of joy upon the rose leaf wet the secret of bird ecstasy in spring white fire of stars the moonlight silver thrall and many a sweet and lovely hidden thing we separate we thought we knew them all but neither knew till we went hand in hand great mother nature's heart nor did we see the glory of her face nor understand her voice that calls us towards eternity End of poem. This recording is in the public domain. Fairy Thrall by Rosa Mulholland. Read for LibriVox.org by Sonia. Fairy Thrall. Bridget Delaney, her that lives under the hill, there where the smoke's on the thatch, for no chimbley have they, where does she go at the bidding of something or somebody's will? in the dead of the midnight or noon of the midsummer's day droppin her needles and throwin the stockin down there on the chair and away with her over the bog and she can thin and small till the sketch of the shape of hers swallied at last in the air of the cloud and the mist and the last of hers nothing at all sure weeks she does be gone and nobody ever speaks as much as to say where's bridget for all of us know what happens when dim ones start to be plain their impudent freaks somewhere above or below and the creature she has to go and when she comes back at last and we see her then no more nor the size of a sort of turf that's a mile away and she comin comin slow through the mist of the glen like one in her sleep oh nobody dares to say you're welcome bridget and were wear ye all this while for they know she couldn't tell but give me my needles says she and where's stockin she says with the ghost of a smile that i have to finish and give me a cup of your tea for i have not tasted tea since i seen yes all before says bridget delaney says she and my mouth is dry and they give her the tea but they durstn't ask her more sure she'll leave them again some day and they don't know when or why end of poem this recording is in the public domain a legend of connemara by rosa mulholland read for librivox dot org by betty b the surf beats loudly on the shore uneasy rolls the loosened shingle and mary bars the cottage door and stirs the red log in the ingle she sets her wheel beside the blaze her flitting hand to labor steadies the dark wheel marks her ruddy haze and whirls the light in sparkling eddies her face is full of changeful play and sweet as are the summer meadows when floating cloud and sunny ray bewilder them with lights and shadows but now it blanches wildly pale as wears her spirit dull and weary the wind has taken a shriller wail the cabin room is lone and eerie some creeping sound disturbs her ear she jerks her wheel to stop its whirring then tries to smile away her fear twas nothing but the peat fire stirring wide opes the door without a sound 
and something dark and tall doth enter she rises up and stares around with courage terror self hath lent her a figure grows upon her sight a silent gaze upon her bending o'erpowering with its awful might of wordless anguish tears transcending the chill sea from its garment drips the ocean spray his long hair whitens with livid cheeks and frozen lips he glimmers as the peat fire brightens oh tell me has your boat gone down oh speak and come anear the ingle hoarse sounds her trembling accents drown the thick surf beating on the shingle like distant murmurs faint and rare like dreamy echoes low and broken a voice comes stirring in the air and words like these are sadly spoken gone are my dreams of wife and home my phantom boat is waiting yonder like lonely seagull in the foam henceforth upon the waves i wander my sin is this i tempted god in eager youth i grew defiant and forth upon the storm i rode to wrestle with the angry giant he smote me down god took my life the life i had flung down so lightly and doomed me to perpetual strife of travel on the ocean nightly in storm or calm by star or cloud my boat must plunge among the billows while comrades round the hearthstone crowd and children nestle in their pillows nor ever can my weary soul pass restfully through heaven's portals till perfected hath been the whole of time decreed me among mortals it ceased the shadow drenched and pale went slowly outward from the ingle the wind sent forth a keener wail the surf groaned loudly on the shingle in calmer storm by star or cloud doth mary watch at dawn and gloaming each foam wreath seems a glistening shroud each shadow seems a dark prow looming she weeps when tempest will not rest and wildly prays to blast and break her twould be a blessing doubly blessed if god would pity her and take her end of poem this recording is in the public domain end of dreams and realities by rosa mulholland